Dylan Ross over the past couple years has been very consistent in CCIW play. Six and four last year, nine and three the year prior, both times finishing third. A few years ago, 2021, finishing second with an eight and four record, but past two seasons falling in the semifinals last year to Carthage College, at that time ranked number nine, and then losing three sets to one to North Central back in 2022. But right now off to a 4-0 start and looking to try and build on that. Currently, today's rankings number eight in the nation. Yeah, the CCIW is a really tough league, like Carthage in particular, they, they won the national championship two years ago. Very, very strong program year in and year out. Um, but the knack that where the Eagles play, like we play, that's probably one of the toughest leagues in the country as well. Like two really tough volleyball conferences. Um, it's nice to see, like I know Edgewood has some big goals. They're trying to chase the, chase the conference tournament this year, try to make that top half, take that next step forward. So I think playing a, t a really solid team like Loris is a really good measuring stick for where they're at early in the season. And right now showing that they can hang. Too strong on the serve, back within two points, but again, back within two points against a top 10 team in the nation this early on in the season for such a young program that we mentioned, no seniors for Edgewood. They're looking to make this their season, accomplish some of those goals. Back row, beautiful dig by Hills Astro. Fiorenza, this time dug out by Brook, oh, excuse me, that's Mills. Couldn't get a clean dig on it, out of bounds. 18-15, Loris. Yeah, it was a good defensive effort by uh, Edgewood there, but again, you can't, can't keep giving the other team big opportunities. It's just hard to defend them that many times in a row. Fiorenza, three and a third kills per set through the first four matches. Sets this one up for Schwartz. Schwartz goes too far across court. Yeah, I think he was trying to go high hands too. He was trying to find the blockers and he just went a little too hard angle. Again, we have another chance. Eagles uh, have a chance to try to break into this lead. We're starting to get into uh, the you know winning time. Anytime you get after 20 points, you gotta start playing your cleanest, best volleyball. So let's see if we can catch them before then. A nice effort there by Andrew Hoffman diving out, but not enough is it. In fact, a bit too strong and falling down cross court. It's kind of a, a tough angle. Well, I think he was playing a little deep. He was playing deep down the line defense and he got caught a little late on that short tip. Um, I think they need to, I mean, because right now so far, the right side attack for Loris has been brought everything cross. They have to probably respect that and not force them to hit the ball line before they start defending it that hard. And Fiorenza trying to take advantage of an error, commits an error himself and Edgewood, the way they reacted in their huddle, they knew they got away with one there. Well, I mean, that was just, I, I know Fiorenza wants that one back. I know <laughs> my women's team over there in the stands are giving him an earful about that one. <laughs> Top touch by Dermody, still alive, much to the surprise of Aiello. Fiorenza sets one over. Back row Patterson off the net, and he got it. Again, I, like, I, I think in those long rallies, the team that throws more punches is gonna usually win, right? And there was a lot of, you know, throwing off speed stuff, free balls, easy things, and finally, Edgewood decided to take a swing and scored. Patterson into the back row, Ober fell up. Fiorenza into the back row. Patterson shut down by Tyler Cradiville. Yeah, he got there a hair, Patterson got there a hair late and had to hit that low. Just got too much of the block there. As we get late in this set, each point mattering, just two point. Difference, 20 to 18, Fiorenza, a low serve into the back row. Patterson floats one, diving out, overfell. And a double touch on Loris makes this a one-point set. 
Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, I think it's the correct call, but usually they let the guys get away with murder on the second touch. So I, I, I know that probably surprised uh, both teams that he called that one. And a service error. Again, stopping that Edgewood momentum just when they get something going their way. Seems like a lot of service errors have killed anything before it started. Hill Sastro tools the block, keeps it one point. No, it was a good, that was a good fast tempo set to the outside. Hill Zastro was able to take that off his outside hand, score. You, I mean, use the block, don't get don't get beat by it, right? And he made a really smart play. Here's a chance for the Eagles to try to tie this up and then pull ahead. And another service error. That being the sixth of this set alone. Right, and in a two point set against the number eight team in the country, you don't want to give them six, six easy points that they didn't have to earn at all. 18 service errors in the loss to Augustana last Thursday. When you think about that, 18 service errors, that's almost an entire set's worth of points. 22-20, Loris still ahead. On the second touch, Will Gerke. This time, it's Loris tooling the block. 23-20, starting to pull away, just two points away from taking this first set. And that was a decent timed block by the Edgewood Eagles. They just didn't quite press hard enough, so they were able to tool it off us. Aiden Del Dagan, right-handed serve. Bruins calls for it. Hills Astro floats it. Far side Aiello. Patterson's there. And it's a point for the Eagles. Yeah, Loris was in the net on that one, which is uh, which was good because we sent that one a little long. But sometimes it's it's better to be lucky than than good. Sometimes so <laughs> it gives it gives the Eagles a chance here. 23-21, Eagles clawing back, and they're gonna say that's another point for the Eagles. Close into the net, Sean Wenzel. Yeah, that's the correct call. That pass got the setter just a little too tight. He tried to reach up and save it, and his uh, right arm got into the net as he jumped and set that ball. Aiden Del Dagan getting his arm caught in the net, bringing this back within one, 23-22. And an attacking error from Wenzel. We're tied up at 23 here in the opening set. Starting to build a little momentum, right? This point, this point is gonna be huge, right? I would even think Gerke's thinking, we don't need to serve an ace, we just need to put it in, keep putting pressure on Loris. And there, that very critical error. He wasn't thinking ace, but he sure as heck wasn't thinking error there. Yeah, I mean, but now they get a chance, right? They get a chance to make a good pass, run some offense, get it back to Tide. I would tell him not to worry at all, just go and play ball. Bruins is there. Bump over. And they're saying that that was tipped of Dorian Fiorenza. That was a great play by the Eagles. Hills Astro made a really tough first pass, but then, then Gerke went back set very right back to him and he took it right off of Fiorenza's outside hand. Really tough play. That was a good ball. They're tied at 24. Edgewood having the opportunity. Fiorenza. Dug into the air, hits the ceiling, Mills, but sent over by Dermody. Watch the middle here. Overhand, back to Gerke, setting up Patterson, tools the block. It's 25-24, thanks to Gavin Patterson. And I think they're starting to see that uh, Fiorenza right now, he's kind of just going straight up on the block rather than pressing, and they're able to use that outside hand to their advantage, getting some nice deflection kills. Set point for Edgewood. Fiorenza far side. 
Mills got it, but running into the wall is Ryder Hills Astro. A good reception by Mills, but obviously sending it back. That's a hard one to receive. Oh yeah, no, Fiorenza can bring the heat. Like he's he's definitely a strong outside hitter. And everybody in the gym knew that the ball was going to him on that on that play. But good hitters are good hitters. They're gonna score. 25 all. And that right into the wall of Fiorenza and Rother Mel. Yeah, Hart just got a little too far away from his setter there. I even think he was a little surprised that it got set to him. And so, yeah, he hit that a little low and in front of him, right into that triple block. Reigning defensive player of the week, Sean Wenzel to serve. Patterson, open hardwood, ties it up at 26. Yeah, Patterson's had a nice first set. Uh, he's, when he, especially when he is in tempo, he's got that quick arm swing. He's been able to find some space around the Loris block. Third on the team last year with 166 kills. Has five in this set. And Fiorenza off the block gets the point back for Loris. Yeah, we have to keep siding out until we can get Fiorenza back in the back row. Like he's 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 a force in that uh, offensively for Loris. We just got to keep uh, siding out here so we can give ourselves some better opportunities. 27-26. The second set point for Loris. Brooms setting it up for Dermody. Over to Fiorenza. Back to him again, and he had a wide open back corner. He wanted that point, and he got it. First set goes to Loris. And I think, honestly, that, that started off because we sent over a nice, easy, off-speed shot into the middle of the court. You know, we didn't uh, we didn't take those opportunities to really push the push the issue or force Loris into bad opportunities. But hey, that was a heck of a fight by uh, by the Edgewood team, and I think they should feel pretty confident going into set two. First set goes to Loris, 28-26. We'll step away for a brief moment here in between sets. When we return, it's set number two here from Edgewood. 